And during the next half hour, I will be introducing you to Reach into Phonics for grades three through five. You need to have your Reach into Phonics Teacher's Edition in front of you during this session. If you'd like to retrieve it, please pause the recording now. You can click to resume play when you have the Teacher's Edition in front of you. You may also wish to gather some sticky notes or tabs to mark some of the pages we'll be discussing. Reach into Phonics for grades three through five builds fundamental reading and spelling skills in the context of highly interactive lessons designed specifically for older elementary students. This program can be used with our elementary program, National Geographic Reach, or implemented as a standalone program. Today's training session is designed for teachers using Reach into Phonics for grades three through five as a standalone program. By the end of this session, you will be able to develop a solid understanding of the components and instruction for Reach into Phonics. You'll also learn how to place students using the Reach into Phonics placement test. And you will understand how to teach phonemic awareness, phonics, decoding, and high frequency words with Reach into Phonics. And finally, you will understand how to use the many assessment tools available with this program to assess your students' mastery and retention of the phonics and decoding skills they are learning. Reach into Phonics provides explicit and systematic instruction in phonemic awareness, phonics, and high-frequency words, which is especially helpful for students learning to read in English, such as your English language learners. The lesson path for Reach into Phonics begins with high frequency word instruction. Students then receive instruction in various phonics skills. And finally, that is followed up with application in their own reading of decodable text. But before we get into the instruction, let's look at the components that you will use to conduct your lessons. You may want to tab page Roman numeral 5 in your teacher's edition. You'll find a detailed description of each component there. You'll also want to spend some time after this session going through each of the components and getting familiar with them. There are 46 double-sided sound spelling cards that have nice photographic images that introduce the sounds and their corresponding spellings. There are 214 double-sided phonics picture cards. Again, you will like the images on there. They're very clear and easy for students to understand and use for practice and reinforcement. The write-on wipe-off boards are six double-sided boards with pens that enable students to respond in lessons by writing spellings and words. When we get into them, you'll notice how the sound um, boxes are already there for you, which makes it nice and easy. The Word Builder is an online resource with electronic letter tiles, word tiles, transparencies, sound spelling cards, and interactive tools. You'll make a lot of use of this. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. There are also some practice masters um, on, it, it, with this program that provide extra practice for students. The Songs and Sounds CD is found in the front of your teacher's edition. You can also find MP3 files for these songs and sounds in, on the website. We'll talk more about that in a bit. And finally, there are many assessment tools located right in your teacher's edition that provide you with um, assessment tools for concepts of print, phonemic awareness, phonics and decoding, and word recognition. The Reach into Phonics placement test ensures correct placement and helps your students' success with phonics skills. It's really important to identify the best placement point for your students. Non-readers and newly arrived English learners are placed at the beginning of the program. Students with some literacy skills will be placed in the middle in Lesson 33 before we work on long vowel sounds. 
And finally, students who come in with more literacy skills, but who still need to work on diphthongs, variant vowels, and consonants, the more complicated of the phonetic skills, will be placed um, further into the program starting with Lesson 92. In your teacher's edition on page T257, you will find a listing of each of the placement points and the corresponding lessons and objective summaries for those lessons. This gives you a good idea of the types of skills students need to have in order to be placed at different lessons and also the types of school skills that you'll be building within those lessons. When we talk about the placement test, the thing to keep in mind is that as students score 80% mastery within a section, that's where they should start. So let's look at the objectives for placement point one. If students are able to know and are able to perform about 80% on these skills, that's where they'll start. Same thing with placement point two and again with placement point three. Let's go into more detail. This is a, a shot of the first page of the placement test. You'll need to make copies of the placement test for each of your students. It's found on page T267. And then on page T279, you'll find the scripts to administer the test and the answer key so that you can score it. Scoring and placing students using inside phon or using region to phonics is actually pretty easy. Look at page T275. We're going to go through some examples so it makes it crystal clear. After administering and scoring the test, the next step is to analyze the items to see which skills the students have mastered. Let's look at this student here. You can see the, the circles are items that they completed correct. So this student was able to uh, master all of the letters and sounds for this section. They had a pretty good understanding of the short vowels and, you know, 50% in the blends and digraphs for a total of 87% in this section. So they scored over 87%. So they have placed out of placement point one. But let's look to see where they performed in the next section. You can see here the total is 60% performance. So it's less than 80%. So um, they did attempt some on the third placement point, but they didn't do very well. So this student would start at placement point two because that is the first time their percentage correct is below 80%. So they'd start with Lesson 33. When you're testing a group of students, it will be useful for you to use the class profile chart. That makes it easy for you to form small subgroups of your students so that each group of students is placed appropriately. Let's look at some more examples. Okay, placement point one, 87%. Placement point two, 80%. But you already know where this um, student will start. And placement point three, forty six percent. Okay, where do you think they'll start? You're right. The first time they got below eighty percent was placement point three, where they did forty six percent. So if you start at the beginning of that section in instruction, you should be reaching the student right where they are able. Let's look at another one. 53%, 20%, 13%. I don't think it will be difficult to figure out that this student needs to start with lesson one. Now, for students who don't even get anywhere near um, 80% on the first placement test, uh, or the first part of the placement test, we need to go back even further. And this is where we start with the foundations of reading lessons. Students who have not mastered objectives, any of the objectives for placement point one, should start here. Also, 
when you have newcomers or non-readers, you'll want to start with this section because it really goes back to the foundations of uh, elements of reading in English. And it covers the most common high-frequency words that those students likely do not come prepared with. Let's take a look at these. Find page F1 in your teacher's edition. Now, there are a number of assessment tools that you can use when you're using the foundations of reading lessons that will really inform your instruction. You want to make sure that you're teaching students where they are, and these tools will give you good information to do just that. At the back of the book where the assessments are, you will find a phonological and phonemic awareness assessment. You will find a letter, sound, and name assessment and you will find a high-frequency word assessment. Remember, if students have already mastered these skills, you don't need to do this section. You can go directly to Lesson 1. We're going to go through the lesson plans for Foundations of Reading. High-frequency word instruction includes a teaching routine that features a model lesson, word lists, and practice sentences. And then you focus on phonics and decoding lessons. In the foundations of reading, you are teaching consonants and short vowel sounds. You'll use many of the same components that you'll use for later lessons in the foundations lesson such as the sound spelling cards, the transparencies, the letter word tiles. The Foundations lesson um, organized 91 of the most basic high-frequency words into 15 different step, sets for instruction. You can see an example of the grouping that's found on page F4 on this slide. So you'll notice how each of the word lists has a set of, of words, has corresponding practice pages, and also has corresponding phonics lessons, the consonant sounds and short vowel sounds that kind of match up together. So you'll want to make sure that you're teaching them at the same time. You can use the high-frequency word assessment to judge where you need to start. Once a student misses about five in a row or five on a list, that's a good place to start. The instructional routine found in the model lessons on page F5 is used to teach high-frequency words. You're going to find a lot of routines that you'll repeat from lesson to lesson. That makes it easy for the students and for you to focus on the actual words that you're teaching, not on how you're teaching them. So the routine starts by introducing the new words, follows a specific pattern, look at the word, listen to the word, listen to the word in a sentence, and this is where um, the sentences are provided for you, presentation sentences. Say the word, spell the word again, or spell the word, and say the word again. Your students will pick this up right away. You'll also notice in your teacher's guide things called sentence builders. Those are used when you've practiced the words. You're going to use the word builder online resource to do that. But you'll also use the build sentences models that are provided in your teacher's edition. Let's talk a minute about the word builder. This is accessed through MyNG Connect for Reach into Phonics. In the very front of your teacher's edition, right behind the Sounds and Songs CD, you will find a page that has a key code. This is what you need to use to set up your account for the very first time. Once you've set up your account, you will have access to this resource. 
you can use this resource. This is the Word Builder. You can use it um, from an LCD projection device at the front of your classroom for whole group activities, or you can have students use it as partners at one computer, or if you have the luxury of many computers, you can have each student using them one-on-one. -on -one and you'll have to monitor it, monitor it to that. But you'll want to make sure that you see that little help button in there. That's a good way to get back to where you started if you get a little lost in terms of locating the different pieces and parts. But the transparencies are all listed on the side. If you click on them, it brings up the appropriate words and lesson, uh, letter tiles for that particular lesson as well as the transparencies. Definitely plan to spend some time um, dinking around, as we say in technology, with MyNG Connect for region um, into phonics. You'll find many, many resources. Okay, let's go back and look a little bit more closely at some of the reading routines, the teaching routines. We're on page F8 right now if you're following along. After the high frequency word instruction, students move into phonics and decoding lessons. Again, and as always, you'll use a consistent routine, which is a research-based way to help students learn a step-by-step -step process for in, uh, learning and practicing sounds and spellings. These are always found in your lesson plan directly, but they are also found up front in your teacher's edition, beginning on page Roman numeral 6. The purpose of step 1 of this reading routine is to develop phonemic awareness so we can orient students to the sounds of English. In step two, we're going to layer in the actual ways to spell the sounds that we've practiced in step one. You'll notice that we don't use the pictures and corresponding letters until we get to step two. Step one is all about hearing the sound. Once you've introduced the students to each of the sounds and spellings, you will work within this section to provide them with opportunities to associate the sounds and the spellings. Just like we did in the introduction to the sounds and spelling, we begin with, we, we begin with teaching and practicing. There's a script for this to help you follow along and make sure that you are giving the students the information that they need in a consistent manner. It really makes it easy. The scripts are all in a nice spiral-bound book that go along with each of the transparencies. Below the image of the transparency is where the script is in your teacher's book, but it's also in that binder. You can begin with oral practice. Oops, I'm sorry. I jumped ahead of myself. You can begin with oral practice to develop phonemic awareness. Then you associate the sounds and the spellings, just like you did before. And students will learn the consonant names and wait how to form the letters. And then finally, once we've completed the guided practice, students will have the opportunity to practice what they've learned on their own in the practice book. You can also use the assessment tools after you complete the foundations of reading lessons so that you can monitor students' progress and make sure that they've mastered the skills in this section before you move into the other lessons. Again, there's the phonological and phonemic awareness assessment. You may want to give that again, as well as the letter sound name assessment and the high frequency word assessment. Additionally, you can give them progress check one, which summarizes all the skills that were taught in the foundations of learning lessons. Now let's look at lessons from other placement points. The structure of the lesson stays pretty constant. The content will change and the specific activities will change. But let's take a look at Lesson 33, which is the, at the second placement point. Now, students who still need to work on high-frequency words will start up at Lesson 31 to make sure that they get all of those words covered. If you're using region to phonics primarily with English learners, you'll probably always want to start with the high frequency word lessons in each section. The lessons in region to phonics provide explicit and systematic instruction in phonemic awareness, phonics, and high frequency words. Okay, as we saw before, 
um, the lesson plan or lesson path starts with high frequency, moves into phonics, and then goes into application. Let's look more closely at the instruction. Here we see how to teach high frequency words. Notice the um, consistent routine. Does it look familiar from what we just went through at the foundations lesson? That's right. It's the same routine. Now, when you're introducing a new word to your students, do you ever have a problem coming up with a good sentence or a student-friendly elaboration? You'll notice at the bottom of the page, um, there are sentences provided for you and then elaborations if students have difficulty with the meaning or the context of how you're using the word. And it just makes it easy for you. You can always add other sentences for examples, but it makes it nice that it, they're all there for you. Also, notice the high frequency daily practice icon at the bottom left corner. I bet you've already figured it out. You're right. There's a routine for that. So it's found up on page 11 in the front of your teacher's edition. You'll be referring to it often. The first step in teaching the phonics skills is teaching sounds and spelling. We'll be teaching each sound spelling step by step before we move on to the next one. So remember, you develop the phonemic awareness listening to the sound then you get into the sounds and spellings and blending. Um, you can use the script and the transparency for this. There's also the audio CD, lots of support, including language supports. That's a nice tool, especially when you have a lot of English learners. You'll want to take a few minutes to flip through the next couple of pages and look at the various types of transparencies that you'll be using for instruction. Finally, students will apply what they've learned with decodable text. These are passages throughout the practice book. And they also have tear-out fold-up books, as you can see here. Notice the four different ways to read the text, whisper read, partner read, group read, and choral read. Each of these serves a different purpose and has different goals. You'll want to complete each of these types of readings with your students so that they get the full range of practice with the different skills of reading, and the repetition will be very helpful for them. At the end, of each group of lessons, you will find a review for that group of lessons. And again, a script is provided. Notice the letter tiles that you will be using for this lesson. It gives them right there for you, tells you what you need to have available. Take a moment to see where you will use these in the lessons. Okay, down at the bottom once you're blending. Now we've seen the steps in the Region to Phonics lesson path. We've gone over high frequency words, phonics skills, and then application with independent reading and the fluency in reading and spelling. Region to Phonics uses this instructional path consistently throughout the program to complete the full scope and sequence of phonics and decoding skills. Let's take another look at Region to Phonics assessment. We've already discussed the concepts of print and phonological and phonemic awareness tests as tools that inform instruction. There are also decoding word lists and progress checks for each week's worth of lessons or each unit's worth of lessons. The progress checks measure students' cumulative decoding skills and knowledge of high frequency words as they move through the program. We have covered a lot in the last half hour. Let's go back over our outcomes, and you can gauge what you'll need to go back and review a little bit more closely and what you're ready to start using tomorrow. Hopefully, you've un developed a solid understanding of the components of Region to Phonics and how they are used in the instructional path. 
You've learned how to place students using the placement test. And you have learned how to teach phonemic awareness, phonics, decoding, and high-frequency words with the teaching routines and instructional design of Reach into Phonics. And finally, you should be familiar with the assessment tools you will use to assess your students' mastery and identify areas that they are needing reteaching and are able to move on to the next skills by using those tools. So bottom line, our overall objective has been to increase your knowledge of Reach into Phonics so you are ready to go into your classroom tomorrow and begin teaching with the program. Thank you for attending this National Geographic Learning Reach into Phonics for Grades 3 through 5 webinar.